Vikings first domesticated fire and we were able to cook food for the first time, that was essentially a transhuman technology, which freed up all this time for the development of all these other things like culture and you know all the things that followed. But with the domestication of fire also came burning the village next door, advances in our capacity to destroy. So I think when we get excited about the future, particularly with things like blockchain, amidst the exuberance of technological disruption and transformation and extending our cognitive capacities, extending our creative capacities, it's good to temper the enthusiasm with an acknowledgement that tools and technologies are always double-edged sword, and it's up to us how we use them, right? The interesting thing about blockchain evolution coming on the heels of the internet revolution or evolution is that they're really part of the same thing. And act one, let's call it the internet, is not complete without act two. The superpower of blockchain is the permanent nature of it, this notion of immutability, and the ability to have parties that do not trust each other all mathematically agree on some result or outcome. Let's say you and some buddies are getting together for a poker night. And your buddy was supposed to bring a set of poker chips, but he forgot it. To get together with the guys doesn't happen often, so you're not gonna cancel the game. Everybody takes out a sheet of paper and you say, listen, we're gonna sign poker chips, and every hand that we play, you're gonna record it on your sheet of paper. And at the end, make sure everything matches up. Not assuming anybody's cheating, but the more people we have playing, the more accurate our system will be. That's essentially what the blockchain's public ledger is. It's just people keeping track of different transactions. Different networks in society have different values, and the beauty of blockchain is the programmability. So blockchain brings software to monetary tools, to ledgers, and to databases, and allows us to program truly whatever we can imagine into the governing code of these applications. I fundamentally find the impulse behind distributed ledger to be a very humanitarian impulse. We can actually trust people themselves to handle their exchanges of value. Trust is a really interesting concept. In the digital world in which we live, there are lots of currencies that are not cash. Aspiration is a currency. Facebook makes a market in it. Intention is a currency. Google makes a market in it. You don't intend to go to Google. You intend to go somewhere else. And they translate that currency into cash. Netflix does that with your passion. Amazon does it with your consumption. Cryptocurrencies do that with your trust, that they are, in fact, valuable. Money, since the beginning and in all the forms that we see it around the world today, is fundamentally about trust, but about different kinds of trust. For certain kinds of objects that function as money, really the kind of trust at issue is interpersonal trust. The thing with money is it's never just paper, right? It's always got that institutional authority behind it. It's always got those interpersonal relationships behind it that, in a sense, subtend its, its power, its economic power, its political power, and its heft in our society. The first key moment in the evolution of currency really would be the development of systems of reckoning outside the human brain. That's, you know, 10 to 8,000 years BC or maybe a little bit later. The next key moment really is the period of the minting of the first coins. This is going to be around 600, 500 BCE. Then I would probably say the next key moment would be around 1000 AD. And this is where we start seeing paper currencies circulating in China for the most part but then also spilling over into the use of paper to record transactions. I think my next key moment would really be the development of double entry bookkeeping in Renaissance Italy by a fellow named Luca Pacioli, who devised the first system for double entry reckoning that allowed for whole new kinds of transactions separated from each other in distance and in time. This is the raw hex version of the Genesis block of Bitcoin. The very first block of transactions ever mined includes this text. It says, the Times, the 3rd of January, 2009, Chancellor on brink of second bailout. Now, this is in reference to this newspaper article in the Times in the United Kingdom, which described uh, basically the role of the Chancellor and the central banks in the 
collapse of the financial industry in, in 2008. This uh, has been taken by the Bitcoin community as confirmation that Bitcoin is a political project, um, not just a digital cash, but as a way of taking the power back from uh, third parties and central banks and authoritarians and for people to be able to own their own money and control where that money goes. And now we enter what I believe is the most exciting era of money. And this is the era where money comes from the people. When money comes from the people, we have a completely different paradigm. Aside from laws on the books, what is actually preventing humans from making money? The jig is up. Money is what you believe it to be. If I make a money and you accept it, it's money. What gives it its value to begin with is its liquidity. A liquid currency is a valuable currency. An illiquid currency is play money. And this liquidity is the lifeblood of a currency. There are a couple of really important things about cryptocurrency and blockchain that I think that we all need to kind of come to grips with. The first is that they have reopened some questions that I think most people thought were settled around the nature of money, around political authority, around interpersonal trust and trust in institutions. And they did so at a moment where these are questions that people are having across the political spectrum and across the world. So insofar as they focus our minds on those questions that are fundamentally questions about trust, that's a good thing. Things are leaning more toward transparency. Things are leaning more towards lowering the barrier to entry. Things are leaning more towards empowering individuals to be able to connect and communicate and enterprise with one another. Maybe blockchain can be an amplifier to help us realize that kind of a world.